Hello and welcome to our online Wednesday Bible study. Even though we are not together in the same place, we are united by God's Spirit who lives within us. I'm so glad for this opportunity we have to come together. I hope Al is doing well with you, always keeping safe and trusting God is in control and you are loved. We are in a series of Bible teaching from the book of Colossians. So far, the teaching has been good, and I believe today will be a blessing too. Let us pray, asking God for His presence as we study His Word. God, our Father, thank you so much for allowing us to come together to learn more of your Word. Thank you for your blessing, for your mercy, for your faithfulness, and for providing for all our needs. We ask your blessing for this time. Open our heart to receive what you have for us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So let us be ready to uh, listen, to watch what uh, God has for us through this Bible teaching. Have you ever spent time people watching? People watching is where you spend time in a public place like a restaurant or a cafe and watch people live out their lives, how they interact and what they're like with each other. If you spend any time around people, then one thing becomes really obvious. Relationships are often really messy things. They're messy because the people we know and the people we love often do or say things to hurt us. But they're also messy because we often do or say things to hurt them too. Our relationships are really messy because our lives are messy. And our lives are messy because of sin. But for all who trust in Jesus, we get to live new lives. We get to live our lives in Christ. Paul's writing a letter to the Colossians to help Christians stay clear of false teaching that says you need something more than Jesus. And he's writing to help them stay close to the true message of new life that we now have in Jesus. And at the heart of his letter, he says that just in the same way we receive Jesus as Lord, so we're to continue to live in him. Last time we saw how We're to set our hearts and minds on things above because we've died to earthly things and our new life is hidden with Christ in God. As God's people, we now get to live a new life where we're being made more like Jesus. But what does this new life look like in our relationships with our church, in our families and with those we work with or work for? Well, Paul starts by speaking about life in Christ with other Christians in the church. And he says two things. The first is in verse 15. Let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, since as members of one body you were called to peace, and be thankful. We disagree with people all the time, don't we? We want one thing, someone else wants another. Now that's not necessarily a problem in itself, but it is when it blows up into a thing that hurts others. Sin messes it up. In our sin, disagreement often becomes conflict. We disagree with someone about a particular thing and so we fight to get what we want. We let our pride, our anger, and sometimes our hate get the better of us. But especially if it's God's people who are involved, Paul says this shouldn't be happening. We shouldn't be people who have hearts ruled by pride or anger or hate, no. We should be people who let the peace of Christ rule in our hearts. In our sin, we were enemies of God. But Jesus died to remove that sin and bring us back into a peaceful relationship with him. And now that we have peace with God, we can also enjoy peace with other people, seeking to put off our old way of sin and live our new life of peace that we've been given in Jesus. Does this mean... 
we can never disagree with someone. Do we just have to give in to the other person, whatever they say? Well, no. Sometimes it's right and good to disagree. But it does mean we need to be aware of how we disagree with someone. The peace of Christ should be ruling in our hearts. So we make sure we disagree with people in a peaceful way, a way marked by love and humility, rather than in a confrontational way marked by anger and pride. But disagreement and conflict do still happen. How then can we sort things out when there's been a hurtful disagreement amongst other people and especially amongst other Christians? Well, Paul gives us the answer in his second encouragement. Look at verse 16. Let the message or the word, as some translations put it, of Christ dwell among you richly as you teach and admonish one another with all wisdom through psalms, hymns and songs from the Spirit, singing to God with gratitude in your hearts. Letting the, the word or the message of Christ dwell in us richly means that the most important voice in a Christian's life is Jesus' voice. And so the most important voice in any church is Jesus' voice. And because we have the word of Christ written down for us in the Bible, it means listening more to what the Bible has to say than what we, or anyone else for that matter, might have to say. There's two ways we're told to do this. First, we can teach and admonish one another with all wisdom. We're to let the word of Christ dwell in us richly by speaking and teaching the truth of God into each other's lives. And it means we're to let other Christians encourage and challenge us from the word of God. If we're to teach and admonish others, we need to make sure we're being taught and admonished ourselves. You can't help other people let the word of Christ dwell richly in them if you're not allowing it yourself. But there's another way we can do it, by singing. Singing psalms, hymns and spiritual songs to one another with gratitude in our hearts. Christians are to be singing people. Now that might sound a bit weird to some of us. But singing is a great way of speaking truth from God's word to each other, allowing the word of Christ to dwell in us richly. Just like teaching and admonishing, songs allow us to speak truth about Jesus to each other and engage our hearts together with his good news. Do you let the peace of Christ rule in your heart? When you disagree with people, particularly other Christians, are you more concerned with being proved right than showing love to them? Is it more important to you that you win the argument than help them and yourself trust and follow Jesus? For some of us, we need to admit that we struggle with this. We struggle to let the peace of Christ rule in our hearts. We need to ask Jesus to take away any pride or anger in us. And we need to ask him to help us to see that he is the one who brought us peace with God. We should let the peace that he gives us rule in our hearts in everything we do. And do you let the word of Christ dwell in you richly? When do you read the Bible for yourself? When do you read it and chat about it with other people? When do you take time to sing truth from God's word in songs together with other Christians? For some of us, we need to admit that we listen more to ourselves and what other people have to say than we do to Jesus and his word. We need to ask Jesus to give us a deeper love for his word. And we need to ask Jesus to help us value the time we get to spend listening to it personally and with others in our church. If you're a Christian, you're now in Christ. You've been raised with him. And your life is now hidden with him. So act like it. Remember the peace Jesus has given you with God and live out that peace with other people. In the words of Paul, whatever you do, whether in word or deed, do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. But it doesn't stop there. 
Paul goes on to give us some really helpful and really practical ways we can do this in our lives and more specifically in our families and at work. So what impact does living our life in Christ have in our families? Have a look at verse 18. Wives, submit yourselves to your husbands as is fitting in the Lord. Husbands, love your wives and don't be harsh with them. Children, obey your parents in everything for this pleases the Lord. Fathers, don't embitter your children or they will become discouraged. In our relationships with other people, it's often the case that we have responsibility for another person, and it's often the case that someone else might have responsibility for us. Living our lives in Christ affects these relationships. For those with responsibility, they're to use it to love and serve people in a self-sacrificial way. And those who have someone else responsible for them are to love and honour them too. Some people in our world will probably stop listening at this point. But they've missed something. Because this really is how life works best. Just think about God himself. God is Trinity, meaning he is one God, but in three persons. The Father, Jesus and the Holy Spirit. They're all completely equal, and yet they're also different. And it's brilliant. I mean, think about the relationship between God the Father and God the Son for a minute. The Father has responsibility for Jesus the Son, and Jesus is under the responsibility of the Father, and so submits to him. It's a brilliant relationship where they're both equally God. And yet they love and serve each other in different ways and with different roles. And because we're made in God's image, our human relationships have this kind of pattern to them too. Paul talks about romantic relationships. Husbands have responsibility for their wives and are to love them, just like the father loves the son. And wives are under the responsibility of their husbands and are to submit to them, just like the son does to the father. Does that mean that husbands can just boss their wives around? No, certainly not. They're to love them, which means caring for them and doing what is in their best interest, not being harsh with them, ever. Just how the father is with Jesus, his son. And does that mean that wives can ignore their husband? if she doesn't like it? Well, if a husband is there to love and care for his wife, putting her interests above his own, then why wouldn't she want to submit to him? Just like the father and the son, husbands and wives are completely equal. But that doesn't mean they're the same. They have different roles and responsibilities. And when it happens like God intends, it really is a beautiful and brilliant thing. Or think about parents and their children. Parents have responsibility for their children and so shouldn't frustrate them. And children are under the responsibility of their parents, so they should respect and obey them in everything. Does that mean that parents can treat their children unfairly? No, they're to love them and be fair with them, wanting to bring them up to know and follow Jesus well. And and does that mean that children can pick and choose what things they want to honour and obey their parents in? No. If their parents are being loving and fair, caring most of all about their spiritual life with Jesus, then why wouldn't they want to obey and honour them? But our new life in Christ doesn't just affect our family relationships. It also affects our work. Look at verse 22. Slaves. Obey your earthly masters in everything and do it not only when their eye is on you and to curry their favour, that's to to gain or stir up their favour, but with sincerity of heart and reverence for the Lord. And then in in verse one of chapter four, masters, provide your slaves with what is right and fair because you know that you also have a master in heaven. Just as we serve and submit in our family relationships, so.
so, we're able to serve and submit in our work relationships. The most common work relationship for the Colossians was one that we're not really used to, the relationship between master and slave. Now, oppressive slavery is never a good thing, but Paul nonetheless gives instructions for how to act in a way that honours God, even in such a wrong situation. Whilst there's loads of differences, the closest thing we've got to this relationship is between boss and an employee, or between a teacher and student. And just in the same way, those with responsibility should use their position to serve those under them. And those under their responsibility are to obey those they work for. At the heart of this are verses 23 to 25. Whatever you do, work at it with all your heart as working for the Lord, not for human masters, since you know that you'll receive an inheritance from the Lord as a reward. It's the Lord Christ you are serving. Anyone who does wrong will be repaid for their wrongs and there is no favouritism. Here's the key. Whether you're a husband or a wife, a parent or a child, or someone in authority or someone under authority, do what you do because of your new life in Christ. Do what you do for him and like him. In each of these situations, the problems usually come when we don't live the way God says is best. And we know that relationships with people are messy, whether it's in our families, with our friends and colleagues, or in our churches. We can cause a lot of hurt to others, and others can cause a lot of hurt to us. If you feel the messiness of it all, then please speak to an older, wiser Christian about it. Explain your situation to them and try and work it out together how you can let the word of Christ dwell in you richly. But maybe for you, the struggle is that you just don't like the idea of not being in charge of your life. You don't like the thought of anyone else ruling your heart or having a, having a say in how your life is run. You don't want to serve others humbly and you don't want to humbly accept someone else's responsibility for you. Well, remember this. Not only does Jesus know what is best for you and wants what is best for you, he died for you. Jesus gave up his position of power and authority as the Son of God and became a human. He surrendered his life because he loved you and because he cared for you. And in his resurrection, he's given you new life. And so the question is this, do you believe this? And if so, will you trust him? Will you surrender your life to him? Will you submit to him? Will you live the way he says is best? Will you continue to live receiving Jesus as Lord? I believe you have enjoyed today's teaching. It has been a great blessing. Let us give thanks to God for the new life that we now have in Jesus Christ all because of his death and his resurrection. Let us ask God to help us to let the peace of Jesus rule in our heart and the word of Christ dwell in us richly. And also ask God to help us to live under responsibility and take responsibility for others in a way that is godly and Christ-like. I want to invite you to join us our worship service Sunday at 10 a.m. We are in a series of messages called Let Go, Let God. And Sunday, we want to celebrate Pentecost, the day when we remember the coming of this uh, Holy Spirit into the life of, his, of Jesus' disciples. You are invited to join us Sunday at 10 a.m and hope to see you again next Wednesday for our last lesson of this Bible series of the book of Colossians. I hope 
you will be able to join us next Wednesday. Hope you have a great and a blessed week.